Next is Miha Zhou. Miha holds an MA degrees in computer literature, literature theory, and linguistics. He is currently completing his doctoral studies in art history at the University of Ljubljana, focusing on illuminated Arthurian manuscripts of the late 13th and early 14th centuries, their stylistic and iconographical relationship and development, and the dynamics between literary and pictorial, pictorial narration. As speaker, he attended several international conferences, Helsinki, Bucharest, Leeds, Kalamazoo, Würzburg, York, Durham, and Ljubljana, and is a member of the International Arthurian Society of the British branch. In addition to his academic pursuits, he works at the National Radio and Television of Slovenia as pronunciation coach, film critic, audio describer, radio announcer, and newsreader. He interviewed Chris for the Slovenian National Radio and offered a recording and transmit for publication on JPC. Michal. Thank you and good morning and good afternoon to you all. I have no PowerPoint if somebody is wondering, because as said, my contribution is a transcription of an interview with Chris, a radio interview. And as you know, the radio has to do with voices. And uh, what I thought I would do today is to present shortly the topics, the subjects uh, Chris Clarkson and me talked about in almost an hour long interview in 2008 during his uh, last visit but one in Ljubljana. So I wanted to offer a wholesome profile of him as a professional uh, and to present his work and uh, his profession to Slovenian audience. And so I started with a question about his interests of a child and of a young man, of his interests with, which brought him at the end to his work as book conservator. And uh, he talked about uh, several things which uh, Nicholas Pickwood mentioned in his uh, in his presentation today. So about his interest in heraldic armor and costume in medieval brasses, and also of his interest in architecture as a young man. He talked about his early education first at the London Art School, where he with his other, uh, with, with the other students was specializing in various disciplines and skills of fine arts. And then about his education at the Royal College of Art. He mentioned several important figures. Bethel Wolpe, which was uh, instrumental for his entry into the Royal College of Art and with whom he studied lettering and letter design. Then Peter Waters and Robert Powell, uh, who encouraged and uh, initiated his interest in binding. He mentioned Howard Nixon and uh, uh, who was doing work in British, in today's British Library, and with whom Chris uh, spent a lot of time during his last two years at the Royal College and was doing research uh, in period bindings. He mentioned that it was very important for him that during this time, he was able to get to know and handle bindings from all periods and also making his own tools at that point. With almost all of these, so Peter Waters, Robert Powell, and Howard Nixon, he would travel to Florence in 1966. Uh, he described in the interview the steps taken by Dr. Casamassima, who was the director of Florence Library at that point, immediately after the flood, and also the, uh, the decisions they need to take when they arrived, what to do. He said that the Florence flood caused the people uh, doing book bindings that they started to think about conservation of books more precisely and to apply aspects and knowledge from painting and sculpture conservation to books as well. Uh, later on in the interview, he would add some more names as the important figures who, who uh, influenced his uh, professional career or his professional growth. 
Uh, some of them were still from his early years at the London Art School. And this were Mr. Scott and Dr. Matthews. Uh, for example, he mentioned Mr. Scott as the one who uh, took his students to the debris of London uh, buildings because it was just after the war and uh, new aspects of architecture, of London architecture have been revealed by, uh, by the bombing really. Uh, he mentioned Dr. Matthews who was teaching painting technique as an important person because they received an important education and craft knowledge. Something he would later mention was in today's way of education, educating people missing. Uh, he mentioned Werner Schirer, uh, who was teaching graphic design, and then Sandy Cockerell, with whom he worked, and uh, in, in Cambridge, where uh, he worked with Sandy Cockerell, he got into tradition of arts and crafts movement. That's more or less everything what was already mentioned by Nicholas Pickwood. And of course, he mentioned Tony Keynes. Uh, further on, we talked about his work in the United States in the 1970s. Uh, so he said that uh, he worked in what is today Preservation and Conservation Department at the Library of Congress, and uh, that he was very strong advocate against conventional binding of that time in uh, and for period binding for binding which is uh, truthful to historical realities of the periods in which books were produced or originally binded. Then he spoke a bit more thoroughly about the problems of education today. Uh, he mentioned that great problems are posed by uh, the insurance uh, demands which are today in place because they present uh, people like him with many restrictions and uh, almost completely disabled them to uh, take interns to teach them their skills. We also talked about uh, the conditions which need to be met if we want to keep books and paper uh, in best, in best shape. He talked about his experience from Mount Sinai and uh, said that it's important to realize that different conditions have different effects in different places. So he talked about the conditions at Mount Sinai, which would somewhere else cause the parchment to get brittle and so on. And he said, but it didn't happen in Mount Sinai. So there is no general rule. He said that we need to consider which aspects of material are important in that respect. And he mentioned his work on Codex Sinaiticus. I asked him about characteristics of a good or promising conservator, something he, uh, he noticed in students. And he stressed three things that he thinks that such a student needs to have good visual education, good awareness of historical education, and sensitivity to period materials. Again, he mentioned that it's a great problem today and something he was still privileged to have uh, experienced as a young man, work with your own hands because that gives you good sensitivity to period materials. He complained or was weary about the idea that digitization today is regarded as a form of preservation. He said, that's not the case. He also expressed great uh, regret and worry about the limits and limitations of uh, getting quality material today. Uh, he also mentioned that Moulin de Verger has problems or will have problems with getting good linen and good uh, textile for producing material which could be used by book conservators. 
One other important aspect he stressed is that also library policies today are not promising because in many places special collections are sort of disappearing and aren't being developed in what used to be an idea so that the special collections should be museums of the book and he called the present policies which don't care for that barbarian philistine attitude he talked shortly about his uh, his work for book exhibitions uh, he talked about plexiglass cradles and the importance of such exhibitions for educating the general public in the way books need to be treated. He talked about uh, with what kind of light conditions need to be achieved for exhibitions. And at the end, we again came to the problem of getting good materials nowadays. And uh, may I say that we did the interview in the evening after he had done his uh, teaching for the day. He was tired, but still very much uh, prepared to answer all my questions and was very kind. And I think he also shared many important information even for today and which can also be used in our uh, future thinking of how, in a broad, in, in a broad sense, uh, book conservation should be regarded. Thank you. Thank you, Michal.